says that an aircraft um, is very low observable, meaning that radar have a hard time detecting the aircraft in all of its flight profile. The way that you do that is multifaceted. It's not just the materials that you use to build the aircraft. It's actually how you build the aircraft. And it's very important to understand to get a very low observable aircraft, you actually have to build the aircraft with that in mind and build it into the aircraft. So let me walk around this chart just a little bit for you. We start by the large internal fuel tank. You can see the fuel table. We take that software, we go to flight test, which is what you see here. Each of the variants runs through its own flight test program. And then the mission systems, that software that does all of the, the uh, uh, avionics integration, we only do once. We can do it on any aircraft, it doesn't matter, all three variants, because it's identical on all three aircraft. Extremely powerful. That means all three services using it in the US government and all our allies can interoperate and provide the exact same capability, situational awareness, and share it with each other because their aircraft all run the same mission application. Extremely powerful, also a very good affordability initiative, um, such that we're building it once, and all of those nations and all these variants use that same capability. That's this line here. And then finally, we're setting up operational bases all over the US. We have eight up, up and running bases today uh, with flight operations. Two depots have stood up to support maintenance and mods on the aircraft at both Cherry Point and Ogden. And then, as you can see, these gray boxes here that go out of these diamonds, those are all the bases we are going to be standing up over the next couple of years. We'll have 17 bases around the world. So a little bit about flight tests. I mentioned before we're about 60% through our flight test program. That's taking the aircraft out to either Edwards Air Force Base or Pax River on the two coasts of the U.S. and putting it through its cases, all of its flight handling, all of its uh, mission systems capabilities, and having the pilots really uh, take it up to its paces. If I talk about mission systems, again, that's the software that does the avionics and all of the sensor integration. Uh, we are on track, as I said before, to complete the 2B testing in 2014. That is the software that's complete and ready to go for the Marine Corps IOC. We've done lots of testing with multiple ships, communicating, sharing fused data, somebody getting a target, sharing it over with somebody else, and then another F-35, and then that F-35 actually doing the targeting and doing the actual weapon action. All of that is extremely powerful um, in that any F-35's piece of information can be used across uh, the fleet and used to take action. Uh, the MATL warships have been uh, uh, one of those exercises to show not only we can fuse the data off of multiple F-35s, but that the com communications is working well as well. And as I said before, the MATL is a stealth communication technology. Very important. The helmet gun select, you've probably heard a little bit about our helmet. That DAS camera that I showed you, the digital aperture, at night, how the pilots, and ask them about that too, at night flying with that sensor, they basically say it looks like they're in, in daylight. It, it is sensing heat as opposed to light, and so it provides them a very strong uh, uh, night vision capability uh, that we've never had before. Because it's displayed in a, a panoramic view in their visor, it's a very different sensation than having night vision goggles that are giving you soda straws which is what we have in most of our aircraft today. Very, very game changing. And finally, we'll go to the video here. We've done a lot of weapons testing as well. Um, not only air to air, air to ground, all kinds of uh, permutations. If you can click on that, please. GBU-12, GBU-32, and then as you see an AP-20 here. Hopefully that's bright enough that you can see it. So out at Edwards and PAX as well, we've been putting each of the variants through their testing, making sure that the weapons uh, activity on the aircraft is accurate, that they hit their target. So far, all of them have been successful. We have more to do, as you can see here, for 2B. Uh, throughout the rest of this year, we'll be doing some more weapons testing um, uh, at both, uh, both those locations. We have tested every weapon that the Marine Corps will go IOC with. We are just repeating some of those and doing some different profiles with them throughout the rest of this year. 
And finally, on the flight sciences, that's where we're getting the aircraft up, testing it at all the envelope uh, of its flight that it needs to be tested. Uh, we put it through some pretty, uh, from my perspective, not being a pilot, some pretty harrowing um, uh, expeditions here. One of them is air start testing. That's where we take the aircraft up and shut the engine off intentionally and ensure that it can come back up successfully. It was done beautifully. That engine performed uh, flawlessly in all of those activities. Um, and then we also did something called uh, departure test testing, where we take the F-35 and actually put it out of control intentionally, initially with a spin chute for protection, and then you take that off when we know we were fine, and then put it through some paces that, man, it will just uh, water your eyes. So let's go to the video here, and I hope you can see it. I'm gonna let a pilot talk to this one as we play the video. High angle of attack takes us past the stall point of the airplane. Once you get past that stall angle of attack, you can still move the nose around, up and down and side to side, and maneuver to get where you want to be in relation to your opponent. So it'll be a, a maneuver enhancing capability that the F-35 has that perhaps gives it the advantage to any adversary it might encounter. Not only that, it gives high confidence to the pilot flying the F-35 that he can do about whatever he wants to with the airplane, take it to the edge of its envelope, and not be afraid of departing control flight, and not be afraid of uh, getting control back if he does. You can see the spin shoot on there. Again, we did the first few flights with that, then took it off and finished out all of our uh, high angle of attack. We had a lot of activity there in the Fort Worth uh, production. Yuma is where the U.S. Marine Corps has stood up their first operational base, um, and that is the group that is sponsoring uh, coming over here, and hopefully you'll get a chance to talk to those pilots here, uh, if not here at uh, Farnborough. Edwards, as I said, and PAX are our two flight test bases, and then Nellis is the Air Force's operational base that stood up to help with operational training and operational testing uh, later this year and next. Um, if you go to the next chart. But by 2018, which is really just around the corner, using the current program of record, uh, we will have 400 aircraft that are in the field at that point in time. And you can see here, uh, we had to actually expand out past the US because many of those aircraft will be allied uh, aircraft uh, going to their home base. The UK, Norway, Israel, Italy, Australia um, will all have uh, operational aircraft by 2018. Uh, they're either on the production line now or will be in the next a couple lots of um, uh, aircraft production. Um, in the U.S., as you can see there, Luke will be stood up and will have many flags associated with it because that will be our international training base as we move forward. Thanks, Chart. So let's talk a little bit about production and about cost. Affordability is one of the most important items on this program, not only so that I can bring the cost of the production uh, uh, aircraft down, but also to ensure that our sustainment and life cycle costs are um, where we project them and even better. If you look at what this chart is, this uh, stacked bars here going across represent the aircraft productions year over year over year. You can see both the year and what they call the LRIP, so the quantity by designation. And you can see that our production profile has been fairly flat over the last four or five years. Some of that has been economic pressures for some of our customers um, of where they can actually purchase the aircraft. And at one point, the US government slowed us down a little bit so that we could get our development program completed because it was behind, we did have issues, and so that is really why you see that flat production profile. Our bait is uh, 43 aircraft, and as I mentioned before, we're in negotiations for that right now in the end game, uh, should complete that shortly. And then Elric 9 and 10, that is the current program of record, and there's quite a bit of an international content. The way you can see that is all of the green there is uh, international buys. And as we go forward, you can see in LRIP 9, LRIP 10, it starts to be about half and half U.S. purchases and international purchases. As I started the presentation, I mentioned the reason that uh, the value proposition for this program was to have all of the countries up front investing in the program and then getting the economies of scale by having a production profile that had both U.S. and international content up front and enabled them to get a price uh, advantage for that. And you can see that. Uh, taking effect here by about hour nine. The black line that you see coming down this, this chart is the cost of the aircraft over time, and you can see that here. This is the um, 
average aircraft price. Um, and our goal is to stay below that black line. The black line is the U.S. government's projection of what the aircraft should cost. And every lot, we've been able to ha have a price that was below the projection, which is where you want to be. Um, my goal is when I get out to 2019, as you can see there, is to have an aircraft price that is below any aircraft price for a fourth gen aircraft that you could buy on the market at that time. That's just not my goal, that's my customer's goal too. And you'll get a chance, uh, some of you, to hear from him tomorrow um, about um, our goals and objectives for uh, the affordability of the aircraft. It, you can see here also in 2019, uh, we start to get some really good uh, volume there. That's uh, over 100 aircraft in uh, production at that point in time. Next chart. So a little bit about um, where we are right now um, in 2014. We did stand up loop this year. That was a real important milestone for us, the International Training Base. We have started 3i flight testing. As I said before, that is the U.S. Air Force's version of software that they will go operational with, and that is in flight test right now on the new hardware. Uh, our first jet will arrive to Buford uh, later this month, and Buford is the stand-up of the U.S. Marine Corps training base, and the U.K. training will also move from Edlin to go to Buford, for those of you who are interested in the U.K. operations. Uh, we will also deliver our first jet to Australia later this year, um, and we will have a little bit of a celebration with them, and that aircraft then uh, will go out to Luke Air Force Base, again, to stand up the international training for the Australian uh, Air Force. Uh, we will continue, and you're going to hear more about this over the next couple weeks, uh, about affordability of this program, bringing the cost of the aircraft down. Um, we have partnered with the U.S. government and our, our partner countries uh, participating in the program to invest some of our funds to help make sure that we bring the cost of this aircraft down. You're going to hear us talk a little bit about that. You'll hear the government also uh, sharing some of that with you. And this won't be the first or the last activity. This is something that we are building into the program so that we can ensure lot over lot, aircraft over aircraft, the price is coming down, not only in production, but also in uh, the sustaining side. 